On behalf of the Griffin Trust for Excellence in Poetry, it's an honour to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award to a man, an Irishman, who many, including myself, regard as our greatest living poet, Seamus Heaney. Seamus Heaney has achieved greatness in his work, and he has worked hard. He's a macker, he's a maker, he's a craftsman. He wants to do a job, and he wants to see it done properly. Um, he's made great poetry, not just because he is a supremely gifted craftsman, uh, but because he has never fallen out of love with words and what you can do with them. Um, because he's held on to an old-fashioned humanism and a boy's fresh ear and eye for wonder. And he is still, as he says in uh, a line from his current book, um, he's still alive and ticking like an electric fence. <laughs> and, and when we look back on these years, we will look back on the age of... Seamus Heaney. Um, I won't go on much longer because I recognize in the Ulster temperament uh, <laughs> something of my own upbringing in the north east coast of Scotland, a, a faint discomfort around praise. Um, um, but um, this is a prize uh, that is, uh, it has no gladiatorial aspect, unlike so many. Um, this is, um, this is a, a celebration of the life and the body of work made within that life. And so um, we all want, uh, on behalf of all the trustees, we want to thank Seamus Heaney um, for the honor he has done us through his poetry. So we would like to now award him the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Griffin Trust for Excellence in Poetry 2012. Would you join me, please, in welcoming Seamus Heaney. The Irish poet Patrick Kavanagh once said, a man dabbles in verses and finds they are his life. Anybody who can say that, and there are many people here who can, uh, anybody who can say that about themselves, they're pretty lucky already. But they are luckier still if they can say they dabbled in verses and received the Griffin Lifetime. <laughs> The applause doesn't count in the, in the minute, you know. So. <laughs> but it is a high honour, all the more so because of the high gifts of the people who have received this award before. And I'm deeply grateful to the Griffin Trust and its board of distinguished trustees. But above all, I suppose, we are all grateful for the munificence and the presence in the culture of Scott, Griffin, and Christine. Also, I think, for the Griffin largesse in general to poetry and poets. It has been a boon and a blessing for poetry and poets, not only in Canada, but all over the world. So I want to end by quoting not Kavanagh, but uh, W.B. Yeats, thinking in terms of the, uh, what the, Griffin, the Griffins and the Griffin people have done. Actually, there are two quotations from Yeats I, I want to use. The first one is, um, they are foremost of those we would hear praised. Uh, and the other is, think where man's glory most begins and ends, and say my glory was, I had such friends. Thank you very much. <laughs>